Playing recently with one of my models that has GPS hold and GPS home on it, I noticed that I was having real problems getting it to stay in any kind of circle and that the GPS home wasn't working very well at all. Now for those of you who have tried this, uh, you may have experienced a similar thing, but I thought it would be interesting just to explain the importance of the magnetometer or the compass that's on the multi-wee boards and why it's so important to make sure that it isn't picking up any interference from the power lines when you're using the GPS hold or the GPS home function. In fact, anything that requires GPS. In theory, doesn't really matter. You can't imagine simply why you'd need a compass for the GPS stuff because surely it knows where it is in space because of the GPS coordinates that it's receiving. In reality, it is using those along with the heading and the way it's pointing to figure out how to control the motors to return it back to the position that you're after. Typically home or the coordinates that it was at when you flick the switch into GPS hold. Without that point back to the proper bearing, the copter will prescribe circles and as it picks up speed and the power to the motors increases, the deflection from the true magnetic north by the compass usually gets bigger. So as the power to the motors get bigger, the deflection and the interference gets larger. That causes an even faster, larger circle to be prescribed in the sky. And before you know it, you're in big trouble. So let me explain why this is the case. So let's flick into our good friend the um, diagram. So we'll start off with here a nice blue X, that's our home location, that is where the model is going to try to get to. Now let's add our little model, so here it is over the top, uh, so there's the quadcopter, and it's going to drift slightly to the right. Now it knows it's drifted to the right, and normally what would happen, it would say, well I know north is above me, because in this example north is at the top of the screen, so because I've drifted to the right, I need to correct myself and go to the left to go back home. And that would be fine, except that because of the interference with the magnetometer or the compass, north is actually over to the right a little bit. And that means that the correction it feeds in is still at that 90 degrees from north that it thinks it is. But now rather than taking it back to home, it actually takes it past the front of the home position. So let's go to the next position. So here's the quad. It's now managed to get in front of the home position. It's still reading the GPS. It's now thinking, right, okay, uh, I'm in front of the home, so I need to go directly backwards. That's fine. I'll go directly backwards. The problem is, is that again, the magnetometer is slightly off because of interference from the power lines and the magnetometer actually says that north is slightly to the right so straight back from north i.e south which is the way that this model needs to go to get back home is actually not straight back it's actually to the back and to the left so to conclude the point here it is again it's now to the back and to the left and now the model is thinking oh whoa whoa hang on a minute now i'm now behind and to the left of the home position, okay, I need to go forward and right, that's fine, I know which motors to spin up, but again, because of the interference, it's actually not going to go north and the right direction, it's actually gonna go almost straight left, practically back to the first position. So you can see in the very simple explanation that we've been through, that what it's going to do is prescribe roughly a circle around the home position because of that compass interference. Let's talk about how you actually resolve the problems with the compass. It's very difficult to electrically, electromagnetically shield a compass from any stray magnetism. The kind of power that's running through the lines on the model will cause little hiccups. Your best friend is distance and to leave as much room as you can between the lines that are carrying the power and the lines that are carrying the signals and the board that has the magnetometer mounted on it. The latest generation of boards that are coming out now actually mounts the magnet 
alongside the GPS unit because that is typically the farthest away from the power system and some GPS antennas get mounted on the top of little carbon poles to keep them well out of the way. If you can't do that, then there are a couple of other options. You can use something called Mu Metal, M-U Metal. It's a very smart technology. It's metal that is very attractive to magnetic fields and pulls them, uh, kind of shields th through the other side. It's actually used in audio equipment and you tend to find it around the back of high-end speaker cabinets or around the back of the magnet in high-end speakers because it's trying to shield it. So if you've ever had a speaker that's been too near a TV screen, typically the old cathode ray tube types, you'll notice the interference. And by putting some mu metal foil in between, that can help. Again, putting a metal plate that is ferrous and grounding that plate in between where the power lines are can also help. But in my experience, the best thing to do is just get the magnetometer as far away as possible from the power lines. Just a point of interest, I've made a couple of um, 440, 450 class quadcopters and what i found is that the quadcopters with the PCB boards where they do the distribution of the power as part of the actual bottom frame are probably the worst for electromagnetic interference. The ones where you run it through a normal set of cables via a spider or a power distribution unit don't seem to have as much of an issue. And I think the reason that I've had this problem particularly on this model here is because I'm using the PCB distribution board. I might make another video when the Moo Metal arrives and show you the difference, but I thought it would be interesting to share this with you, those of you who are looking at GPS and having trouble getting hold to work well. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon.